ओके सो इन द लास्ट पार्ट वी टॉक्ट अबाउट द ओवरऑल एनाटॉमी ऑफ मेल रिप्रोडक्टिव सिस्टम एंड वी हैव सीन हाउ एग्जैक्टली द स्पर्म विल बी ओरिजिनेटेड एंड इट्स प्रोड्यूस्ड इन द सेमिनिफेरल स्टिब्यूल व्हिच इज अ पार्ट इन आवर वेयर टेस्टिक्स राइट द टेस्टिस दैट इज प्रेजेंट एंड दिस टेस्टिस इज कवर्ड बाय द स्क्रोटम दैट वी आल्सो सो सो नाउ व्हाट वी कैन सी इज वी आर गोइंग टू सी द मैच्युरेशन ऑफ स्पर्म एंड एक्चुअल प्रोडक्शन ऑफ द मेल गैमेट बिकॉज़ आई टोल्ड यू अर्लियर our whole idea here will be to find out the mechanism of sperm production that is known as a sper spermatogenesis so what the spermatogenesis and how it occurs so first of all i told you that the spermatogenesis takes place in the seminiferous tubule which is a part of the testis lobules right now in this lobules we know inside the seminiferous tubule two types of cells we've talked about one is the sertoli cells another one is the spermatogonium so we'll start with that cell that spermatogonium is actually male gamete progenitor cell so let's begin with the spermatogonium so if this is a spermatogonium it carries 2n number of chromosomes in the nucleus so spermatogonium gonia in the plural and singular gonium so this spermatogonium will be now undertaking the cell division when during puberty so from the birth all the cells that are present in this testis these are all inside the seminiferous tubule these are all spermatogonia they are not matured enough to produce sperm so they only get this maturation signal by the secretion of androgens or male hormones secreted by these leydig cells that are also present in the seminiferous tubule interstitial fluid so once they get this androgens and signals now the spermatogonia receives uh, this idea of differentiating into the primary progenitor cells known as a primary spermatocyte so they will produce this 2n number of nucleus containing cell but it's a mature one known as primary spermatocyte so from this primary spermatocyte now so this division is a mitosis remember this is a mitosis division but once this division is done then what will happen then the primary spermatocyte will undergo the first meiosis division or meiosis 1 so with the first meiosis division what it will produce cells with n number of chromosomes or haploid cells and they will be known as secondary spermatocyte after meiosis 1 produce secondary spermatocyte so once they produce secondary spermatocyte now another round of division is there which is really important to produce multiple haploid cells and four such haploid cells will be produced here because you know after the meiosis 2 a second meiosis division let me write meiosis 2 and they will produce four haploid cells so this secondary spermatocyte after the meiosis 2 produce what spermatid this four haploid cells that are produced are known as spermatid and where does all the process take place seminiferous tubule so once spermatids are produced now this spermatids they all carry only one set so in number of chromosome but they are not ready yet as a sperm you can call it that they are haploid but they are not sperm yet because i told you in humans we have totally different structure in sperm and ovum which is a male and female gamete they also vary in their morphology if you look at the adult mature sperm the morphology of a mature sperm is different it carry different sections it carry a head it carry a collar it carry a cell cell body and the rest of the tails and all the structures which is not very common so this spermatids need to be modified by its structure once we modify its structure then only we can call it mature sperm right so this final step of modification is required the final step of modification by taking this spermatids 
let's let's draw the spermatids here with the black because that's how we draw it this is the spermatid and convert that spermatid into structure like this it's like it's a simple drawing but it looks something like this now there are different sections from this spermatid into sperm so this conversion of spermatid into sperm is known as spermiogenesis right so normally you know the spermatid once converted it's known as spermatozoa spermatozoa is the similar name as sperm that's known as sperm okay so sperm of spermatozoa but remember all these names because uh, many a times they can ask you question from this type of names and changing name that's why i'm telling you but the spermatid is converted into the sperm carries several different parts or in the sperm so what we have is this acrosome this is known as acrosome acrosome is an extension of the head of the sperm which carry a lot of vesicles filled with different chemical components which are hydrolytic enzymes why this acrosome is important because these acrosomes produce the enzymes which can destroy the egg coat because you know when we'll see the the process of the oogenesis or female gamete synthesis you'll see in that case they those gametes carry a coat outside surrounding the egg and that coats need to be destroyed so that the sperm can enter its nucleus inside the egg which is really really important another very interesting thing the egg that is produced is not released outside the fertilization in humans are known as internal fertilization the process takes place inside the body so someone needs to move who moves sperm again men need to do hard work to reach there so in this case the sperm which is a representative from the male gamete needs to migrate towards the egg so that it can fuse with the egg and can deliver its nucleus inside the egg that's known as the fertilization but for the movement the sperm needs constant energy supply who will provide the energy supply remember and recall the cell biology classes that we talked that inside the cell mitochondria the powerhouse of the energy it is the source of the energy it produces atp so the sperms need to have a lot of mitochondria and where the mitochondria is present in a specific structure known as the collar so the collar produce this lot of mitochondria present in the collar and then this mitochondria produce the energy which helps the sperm to propel its flagella this is the flagella okay flagella is something it's like a it's like a rotating device so you continue to rotate the flagella so that the sperm can literally swim in the liquid environment to reach the egg and surface of the egg that's the idea of the developing sperm so while they produce this specific structures because remember without these structures the sperm is non functional so that's why we cannot call a spermatid the ultimate result we need to modify it to produce spermatozoa and sperm so now what will happen to the sperm that is produced it's produced in the seminiferous tubule which is in here from the seminiferous tubule once the sperm is produced it's mature all its structure is achieved then the sperm is not released the sperm needs to be attached it's like a like you know small missile like structure that they produce and simply put it into their place whenever they need to eject then only they will start releasing the sperm when so once all the structures of the sperm is produced the sperm's head will be embedded into the sertoli's cells you know the sertoli cells are the nourishing cells of the sperm through all this process that we saw from the spermatogonia till the spermatid the sequential development needs the continuous requirement of nutrients and who provides the nutrients this sertoli cells so sertoli cells are the ones so once the nutrients is done and sperm is produced the sertoli cells are also mature enough and continue to support uh, this adult uh, the product produced sperm so the sperm will now insert itself inside the sertoli cells let me show you the the process and the structure how how they are arranged this this part you can see here like let's say this is the seminiferous tubule these are the sertoli cells surrounding in the outside portions okay and these are the cells and this sperms 
a little bit embedded inside the sertoli cells like this once they are produced they are embedded inside the sertoli cells they remain as it is like that then whenever they gets the signal the signal in sense you know uh, the ejaculation right at that time the sperm start to be removed from the sertoli cells and through the seminiferous tubule it starts its journey from the seminiferous tubule to the vas afferentia then from vas afferentia into the epididymis from the epididymis into the vas deferens and through those vas deferens it will continue its journey into the through like near the urinary bladder and there a lot of other secretory molecules will interact to the sperm it will mix with the sperm like seminal vesicle the fluid comes from seminal vesicle and prostate will release some some liquid components and then that will make a mixture that mixture with the sperm will now transfers and trans that that can be transferred through this urethra outside that's the journey of the sperm that's how the spermatogenesis takes place but remember one simple thing the development of male gamete occurs after this puberty okay uh, before that only spermatogonia is the only cells that are produced there and it's only diploid cells then slowly it start to modify itself make the meiotic divisions after the puberty that means the specific age because you know at that specific age the sexual characteristics start to develop in male and the this leydig cells play an important role by producing androgens and also this is controlled by pituitary hypothalamus axis you know hypothalamus pituitary axis they control the type of male hormones that they are going to produce it is going to tune up uh, the body based on uh, the the signal and the amount of hormones that are released at that time and that matures the uh, the male reproductive system to produce the sperm and then the process uh, work accordingly but now in the sec second part of this lecture we'll talk about the female gametogenesis or oogenesis and you will see in oogenesis the process is not that simple in oogenesis uh, this the process of female gamete development is little different because in case of oogenesis the total the mother cell that was there is oogonium the the earlier cell that cell will be present from the fetal time and the number of cells that are produced in the fetus will remain as it is because they will not produce any further oogonium there that's the reason in females after certain age the process of the gamete production is stopped because the cells are taking their journey from the fetal time till a specific time because it's male it started from the puberty only so it's a lot lot long time later the male is uh, is fertile you can say but a female is a far faster because they already have that and the total number of the mother cells that they have at the at the time of fetal status will not change so inside the fetus even the number of oogonium is predetermined and that will not change in future it's only the number of cells if it's if it's let's say a few million then slowly it will degenerate but it will not produce more so usually the mother cells are almost few million but slowly at the time of puberty for females that number of cells the mother cells that will give rise to the female gamete becomes 60000 to 80000 only and then those 60000 to 80000 mother cells will slowly start to divide and then finally produce the ovum so that's why uh, the number of egg or ovum produced is far less compared to the number of sperms that are going to be produced because the sperms are produced all the time but the production of ovum is limited because the mother cells are also limited in number in case of males that's not the case so that's the that's the contrast between male gametogenesis and female gametogenesis so let's look at the next part and the female gametogenesis is also known as oogenesis